in person. Okay, it's it's so good to have you all on the call today, and I hope you're ready to learn. Before we get started, I'm just going to do a few housekeeping. I'm going to randomly call three people, and I'll ask you to introduce yourself and tell us why you chose UIUX track. I mean, I've, I've learned that most people go into tech now because of the money, so I'd like to know what your intentions are. So for the first person, uh, I'll call on patients, patients in Inakili, if I pronounce that right. Can you unmute your mic and tell us your name? Introduce yourself and tell us why you chose UI UX track. Hello, everyone. Good hi, afternoon. Hi, Precious. Good afternoon. Okay, my name is Patience Getrid Inakili. I'm actually a student and I'm hoping to be a lecturer. So, one thing I would like to do is to be able to put abstraction into designs to help explain whatever topic I will be putting out there for my students. So that's majorly the reason I chose UX UI design. I'm a little distracted. Yeah, so I'm a little distracted, sorry. So it's okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Welcome. Okay, next up I'll, I'll call on, what do we have here? Benjamin Umo. Can you tell us why you chose the UI UX track. All right. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Benjamin. Okay. Uh, my name is Benjamin Umo from Aquaibom State. Okay. Um, you made mention of something before you started. You said most people choose it because of the money. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm a graduate of electrical and electronics engineering, and I just tend to look for a new career that will actually make me keep food on my family stable because right now no employment in Nigeria. So that is the more cool reason like I choose your age. So you, you, want, you want to learn a skill then? Yes, a skill. All right, Thank beautiful. You. Thank you very much. Okay, Um. lastly, I'll just call on Josephine Joseph. Can you meet your mic and tell us why you chose the UI UX track? Hello, Josephine. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, can Joshua, are you on the call? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Can you tell us why you chose the UIRX truck? Uh, well, I stay at the second guy. I'm looking for a new career path and I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually a digital artist, so this is like uh, a plus one to my portfolio and skill. Okay, for you and every, every other person on the call, I wish you guys all the best. I mean, it's not going to be easy. I'm not going to promise you that it's going to be easy, but you put in the work. You'll be fine. Okay, so um, let's get started. So today's class, we're going to be talking about the introduction to UI UX. I mean, we'll be talking about UI UX, and I'm sure most of you do not know what it actually means. While the, the rest of the rest of you can actually can actually say that you know what it actually means. So we're going to be looking at the introduction to UI UX design today. And before that, I'll just briefly introduce myself. You already know my name is Fibo Sunday, and I am a product designer with three years of experience in the field. A creative thinker, I've worked on a few projects with teammates and alone, and I can also say I am a collaborative team player. So I thought to play that out of the way. And next, we're going to be getting started. I hope you guys are excited to learn. So first of all, what is UX? We've had a lot about this. We've been talking about it since UI, UX, UI, UX. What does it actually mean? So UX design is actually design of 
elements, you know, that determine the interaction a user has with a product or service. UX design molds the products and services we use on a daily basis to make them easy to use. I mean, a lot of us have used applications, mobile applications, we've used websites, basically digital products. So UX design is what molds these products and services that we use every day and makes them enjoyable for the end users. You know, you can actually make or break the success of a business or brand. So in today's class, we'll talk about UI UX design as a whole and everything that you need to know about getting started in this exciting industry. Now, what is UX? UX actually means user experience. And this is how users feel when they engage with your products. And this concept not only applies to digital products, but also to physical objects and daily experience, you know, like using a coffee maker or buying a car. It also applies to the digital side of life. So think about the, the last time that you transferred money using a banking app or the last time you purchased something online or even played a game on your phone. Now, how each of these applications or websites are designed combined with your needs and goals as you engage with them, it creates the user experience. You know, sometimes it's not really a great experience and sometimes it is. So this is what we call user experience now user experience stands for user ex sorry ux stands for user experience that i already talked about and it encompasses the overall experience that a user has while interacting with a product system or service focuses on understanding and addressing users needs expectations emotions and behaviors to create a positive and meaningful experience. I don't know about some of you on this call, but I mean, I've had a lot of experiences with applications. You know, some of them are good experiences, some of them are bad experiences. So that's the UX. Now UX considers the elements that shapes a user's experience with a product. How these elements makes the user feel and how easy it is for a user to accomplish their desired task. I mean, I want to actually, I want to transfer money to somebody, to a friend on a banking application. Okay, how easy is it for me to actually do that? That's the experience. This could mean anything from how a physical product feels in your hand to how straightforward the checkout process is when you're buying something online. So the main goal of UX design is to create easy, efficient, relevant, and all-round pleasant experience for the user. So you often hear about UX in relation to digital products, such as, you know, websites and applications. But like I said before, UX is not limited to the digital space. Anything that, that can be experienced can be designed, you know, from the packaging of a toothbrush to the wheels or um, to the wheels of, you know, an orthopedic chair. So the impact of good and bad UX is everywhere. It's all around us. So don't, don't limit it to just the digital space. That's one of the reasons it's it's actually a, a very exciting field and also explains why you already know a lot about UX that you realize. So every time that, you know, you try to push a door that has a pull bar or close a confusing website in frustration, you're actually making a judgment on the quality of its UX design. So you can also say that UX is all about the user's interaction or experience with a product or service. So before I move forward, please mute your mic. If you have anything to say, raise your hand so you don't cause a distraction. Thank you very much. So I was saying UX is all about the user's interaction or experience with a product or service. And with that in mind, we're going to move on to the next part. What is UXD? Now, good UX design often flies just under your radar, unless it's it is actually um it's just a really outstanding experience. If the UX is good, you don't actually notice it because things are working the way they are supposed to. But bad UX, you spot it every time, and chances are you won't be very interested in repeating your experience with that product. I keep I tell people that when you're making use of a product, 
first impression matters at all times. Because if I if I get to use an application and I find out that I am not enjoying it, I'm having a lot of um, you know frustrations or I'm getting confused at every turn. Trust me, I'm going to uninstall the application. And even if in the next five years, I get to find out that this application, you know, they have a better UX. It take me a lot to come back to use it because of the first impression I got from using that application. So UXD means user experience design, which considers each and every element that shapes the user experience. It's all about designing specifically for the needs of a user or customer, looking at things like ease of use, quality, and efficiency. Now, UX designers, we look to bridge the gap between the product and the user, right? We think about how people interact with a given product and look for ways to make this interaction as intuitive, straightforward, and easy as possible. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? What screen can you see, please? Can I use the chat box? Okay, let me just um stop sharing and sh reshare back. I think that's that'll, that'll make it better. Come on. Can you guys see my screen? Can you guys see my screen? Okay, so um, just give me a minute. Let me sort this out. Network issues probably because it's still showing the other screen even when I'm moving forward. Okay, so what screen can you guys, what um, slide can you guys see now? What is UXD? How about now?
USSG. Okay, so I've fixed that. Thank you very much for letting me know on time. So I'll just go back. Okay, before that happened, I was actually on this screen on seven. I hope everybody can see. O seven, all right. Awesome. So I was saying that UX designers we look to bridge the the gap between the products and the users. So we we tend to think about how people interact with a given product and look for ways to make these interactions as intuitive and straightforward as possible because we do not want the users to have to think too much. The essence of um, applications, right, is to solve human problems. So if I'm coming on an application, a banking application, for instance, I just want to make transactions and get it over with, okay? And I want to do that with ease. That's what's on the, on the mind of every user. So it's our job as UX designers to make that possible. So we tend to consider the elements that shape a user's experience with a product or service, how these elements make the users feel and how easy it is for the users to accomplish their desired task. This could mean anything from how a physical product feels in your hand to how straightforward the checkout process is when you're buying something online. I think I already mentioned that. So the goal of UX design is to create easy, efficient, relevant, and an all-round experience, pleasant experience for our users. We tend to build a bridge to the customer, helping um, the company to better understand and fulfill their needs and expectations as we're working with you know, shareholders and companies. So in order to come up with um, a creative and user-friendly design solutions, we need to analyze past experiences, you know, research new practices, interview potential users, and keep testing our designs because these things don't come easy. We have to understand who our target users are, okay, in order to be able to serve them better, to actually give them what they actually want. So there's this quote I saw. It says, customers don't often get invited to meetings, so don't be afraid to speak up on their behalf. That's basically our job as UI UX designers, you know, to speak on their behalf, to be able to meet their needs, whether using an application or website. So when focusing on users' needs, it's also very important for a UX designer to be aware of balancing business goals with technology constraints, okay, or opportunities. While it is very true that a product cannot succeed without a healthy business, a business can also succeed without a happy customer. That's our users. So it is the job of a UX designer, okay, to be the customer's advocate. Now, where does UX design come from? I'm sure you're wondering, where does UX design come from? So the term UX was first coined in the 1990s by Dr. Donald Norman, an electrical engineer and cognitive scientist at Apple, a pioneer of user-centered design. Norman emphasized the importance of designing based on the needs and the goals of the end user. Now, let me point this out. As a UX designer, you're actually a problem solver. Even if you come up with an idea, a lot of ideas out there, a lot of new applications. You know, we have food ordering applications. We have applications that do a lot of things, even websites. 
I mean, people can even buy stuff from online now. The world is changing. So even if it is your idea, you are not your only user. As long as you're putting this idea out there, you need to consider other users. So you might actually say that you love a lot of things about the applications, but then you have to hear from other people because you're not the only person using the application. That's why we call it user-centered design because it's centered around the users. The users are actually very important when it comes to planning these things. So in doing so, Norman actually introduced the term user experience. And in his words, it's meant to encompass all aspects of a person's experience with a system, from the materials used to the interaction, along with the interface, the graphics, and orientation of a product. Now that we know about UX design and where it comes from, it's time to put what we've learned into context with some real life examples. So we're going to move on to the next part. Good versus bad UX. We're going to now look at two cases of good versus bad UX. We start with a familiar physical object before moving to you know digital example because I already told you that UX design is all about digital space. Okay, so look at this um, design or this diagram carefully. And take a look at that image. Notice, uh, have you noticed any good or bad UX design? You know, at first glance, the product is recognizable as a tab, right? You can also call it a faucet. And the design looks functional. You know, it has all the necessary components of a tab. It is pleasing to the eyes and all. And you can actually add this as an elegant flair to your kitchen or bathroom. But now consider the following questions. Which way would you turn the handle for hot or cold water? That's one. Number two, which way would you increase the volume of the water? Can you actually tell by looking at the image? I want answers in the chat box. You know, this class is meant to be interactive. So I want answers in the chat box. Looking at this diagram, can you actually tell which way? Okay, I'm getting a lot of no's. Okay, it is important there, isn't it? So if the tap suddenly dispenses um, hot water very quickly, you know, you could have very serious concerns on your hands. A user shouldn't have to think so hard about how to make the tap function, okay? They should be able to use it without error right from the start because we can't even tell which way uh, to turn the handles for cold or hot water because it's not intuitive. So what could you do to make the design safer and more intuitive? Are there any other easy yet effective fixes? These are the questions that we need to ask ourselves as UX designer, because whether you like it or not, somebody designed this, okay? So this is what happens when you have a bad UX, okay? Somebody comes on your application or website and they now start thinking, okay, where am I supposed to go from here? Where is this button leading to? What does this icon even mean? All of that are examples of bad UX. Our applications or websites or whatever digital product we put out there is supposed to be as, supposed to be as easy as possible for any user to understand. So once they come on your application or website, you know where to go because you have guides, okay? You have prompts, things. If you've kept things in place for them to understand how to use this application without asking too many questions. Okay, onto the next one. So we have um we have two we have two images here we have two designs here one is Mac X and the one the other one is Mac um, correct which means it is actually right or we have good and bad the bad one on the left the right the, the good one on the right okay so using the chat box can you tell me why you think the one on the left is wrong and the one on the right is correct I'm waiting for answers. We don't have answers. Should I call somebody out? Okay, somebody said the right one is correct because it's detailed shows why there is an error. Akani Victor, 
a round of applause for him. Okay, that's that's beautiful. The one on the right gives a prompt for further action, which is good for the user. Okay, Dami says the one on the right specified on what was wrong. The one on the right is more detailed. Okay. The, Dara said the one Mark X doesn't specify where the issue is from. Okay, I have a lot of answers here. Okay, I'll just um if you if you want to say something, you can actually raise your hand so I can call you out, maybe one or two persons. Do we have anybody who wants to speak? Raise your hand before you do so. Okay, Florence, go ahead. Florence, can you hear me? Go ahead. Okay, uh, questions, questions, please unmute your mic and tell us. Okay, uh, the first one, the email and the password, they have the same colors. They have the same color. And with that color, one can easily mistake where you ought to put your email and put your password. But in the second one, you will see that there is a color variation. And this color variation easily tells you even without reading that you're not supposed to impute the same thing on both uh, columns. Beautiful, thank you very much. You're already thinking like a UX designer. That's nice. Benjamin Umo, go ahead. All right, um, I, I think I will go a little bit um, apart from, away from what uh, my colleague just said. Um, I think the first one having the same color doesn't really matter about uh, the fact that you can actually tell from email and then password. Then I think the second from the second part, the red that appears here is quick is simply because um, the password imputed was wrong and it had to show a danger or any, um, yes, a danger color or um, any color the designer might want to use. Then secondly, uh, why the second one is right is because we have a reset button to it, attached to it, such that a person can actually reset his password or a password directly from here, instead of going back to the home screen, then looking for where to go and get forgotten password from whether the header or the footer. So that is my own insight. Thank you very much. I'm just going to call the last person, Ken Joshua. Please unmute your mic. Okay, um, so the, the next one is bad UX in the sense that um, we, we know that red, um, the color red depicts a cautionary uh, symbol. And then um, from, the, from the left side, we can tell that the, we, we can't really tell which one is the error, whether it's the email or the password. From the right side, you can actually tell that okay, the password is incorrect. Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much, Ken. Okay, beautiful answers. Beautiful answers. All I'm going to just say is tell your users what the error is. Okay, don't keep them guessing because you can see from the, the design on the left, you're telling your users that there's an error. Error, where exactly? Where did I get it wrong? Because I could not, I, I cannot, I, I may not be able to tell that the password is actually incorrect. And then I, I go to the email to change it. And then I now click on send or enter or submit. And I see the error again. And I keep going, going back and going back and doing the same thing over and over again. That's actually very frustrating. But the one on the right gives you a detailed information. It tells you where you got it wrong and what you need to do. Okay. That's what good UX design is. So as UX designers, this, these are things that you have to take note of. Just
do not keep your users guessing. Don't don't allow them to ask too many questions. Okay, make it as simple as possible. All right, so we're going to move it on to the next part. UX design business questions. Okay, what are those questions that we need to ask ourselves as UX designers? Number one, the users need the products you are making. I know when I know um, you know when you're done with your training, you have a lot of exciting ideas in your head. I want to try this out, I want to do this, I want to do an application for uh for people that are looking for, for children. <laughs> I want to do an application for this. I want to do an application for that. All of these ideas are going to pop up in your head. Well, calm down. Ask yourself, do, do users actually need the products that I am making? Number two, do they want it enough that they will either pay for it or if it is free, spend time looking for it and learn how to use it? Number three, are you missing a key feature that they will need? So imagine um, coming up with, you know, maybe you're designing a, a banking application and then at the end of the day, the users cannot actually perform any transaction or the, or the platform. They cannot make transfers. They cannot, um, you know, check their balance. They cannot do anything relating to, you know, any one of these banking stuff. They don't have, they cannot actually do anything on the application because you're missing a key feature that, that it's supposed to be on the application or the platform. Are you spending time building features that they will never use? You know, most of these applications are filled with features that people don't actually make use of. So these are questions that we need to ask ourselves as UX designers. So next, once you've decided what to build, we need to decide how. So it is in this phase where the, pro uh, the project actually takes shape and a good UX Design, designer can actually help answer most of these critical implementation questions. We have one, how should the content be organized so that users can easily find it? It's actually very important for you to know how to arrange your content. Will users find your application easy to use? Where do they get confused or lost? What content is needed and how should it be written to be most engaging whether we like it or not the way we draft out our content the way we put it out there is very very important for our users okay so we need to take note of these questions lastly we need to focus on the surface of the product by surface i mean what is the product going to look like visually this is an important step because a user's first impression is actually very critical. UXD can help with the following. One, what should the visual tone of the product be? This is actually very, very important. Colors signify a lot of things, you know, just like we have green, white, green as Nigerian colors. We cannot use the same green, white, green if we're designing for a US government because they have their own colors that represent something to them. Okay, blue actually represents something or signifies something, same thing as red, black, and the rest. So imagine um, having a food ordering application and then you're using, uh, what color should I even come up with? Maybe dark brown. You know, you're supposed to use um, colors that, you know, spark up joy. Colors like orange, yellow, and the rest that will make people even salivate when they come on your application. I mean, it's supposed to be a food ordering application. So colors play a very important role in, in design. Okay, so you need to ask yourself, what should the visual tone of the product be? How do users feel when they see your product? Do they actually trust it? So let's say you, um, you were hired by UBA, you know, UBA bank, okay, to design an application. And then you're done with the design, you put it out there. Only for people to come on the application, maybe they go on Play Store and then they see UBA Bank, but then they're seeing purple color. I'm not actually going to install that application because I know that UBS color is what? Red, okay? So color actually, like I said, plays an important role in branding too. Is your product visually appealing and does it spark joy? 
Lastly, is the visual design usable and accessible? I'm seeing a back button. If I click on it, can you actually take me back to where I'm just coming from? I'm seeing a button. If I click on it, does it actually work? Is it accessible? So these are questions that we need to ask ourselves. And we're going to move to the next part, which we call the UX pyramid. Now, the UX pyramid is an excellent framework for categorizing UX efforts and tracking progress. It lays the foundation with fundamentals, okay, before advancing to higher and more enriching user experiences. We're going to be taking it bit by bit. So you should know that levels one to three of the pyramid concentrate on a user's ability to achieve a desired task. Can they use the system to achieve a, a beneficial outcome? Okay, so for the first one, we have level one, which is functional. We have the question, does it work? Now these are the characteristics of level one. No bugs or errors, outages. It has some purpose. Someone has a need for it. Someone actually out there wants to use this application or website. It includes all key features. It works in all modern browsers. So it's actually functional. This is for level one. Now for level two, we have reliable. Is it available and accurate? Now the following are the characteristics. It loads in reasonable time. The content is current and accurate. The data is clean and reliable. Password resets are sent and received promptly. It can be used effectively on mobile devices and standard device types. By that, I mean it's responsive. You can actually use it on an iPad, iPhone, different screen sizes. So it is reliable. Level three, we have usable. Can it be used without difficulty? And the characteristics are users don't get lost or confused. They don't ask too many questions. Users can easily find the contents or products that they are interested in. The site doesn't rely on constant help messages or law instruction manuals. That means it, it is intuitive. Users don't rely on hacks or workarounds to use it. Level three, it is actually usable it can be used without difficulty we have level four convenience so from levels four to six they focus on the user's experience while using the product or service do they actually enjoy using it does it make their life better because trust mm -hmm. me whoever thought of the banking application did us a huge favor the fact that i do not have to go to the bank and sit or stand in the long queue under the sun or the rain I can actually do, you know, my transactions by just a few clicks on my phone. I can transfer money. I can check my balance, you know, and all of that stuff. So we have convenience. Does it fit in with my life and work the way I want? Crosserex is we have users want to use it. Users actively find situations and reasons to use it more. Okay, just like the banking application that I'm using as a case study here, users recommend or vote and rate it. This means it's actually, it's actually um, convenient to use. Now, the next one is what we have. We have level five, pleasurable. Does it have an amazing experience that is worth sharing? And we have the following as characteristics. Users invest themselves into it. Users promote, share, and evangelize it. You know how you have something and it's working pretty well. There's no how you're not going to tell people about it. You want to share the story. Okay, so I'm using this application that is used to do this and it's working perfectly fine. You can actually do a lot of this stuff on it. You're going to tell people about it. It becomes part of the user's regular routine. We have the business people you know, people that um, run businesses every day. I'm sure they get to use the banking application almost every day, you know, to either receive money or send out money or check their balance and all of that. So it becomes a regular routine for them. So that's for level five. 
level six, we have meaningful. Does it have a personal or social significance? You know, many budget focused businesses only see value in achieving up to level three. So they tend to miss out on improved customer loyalty, customer advocacy, customer, customers actually spend, um, you know, they spend a lot of time on applications and many other incredible beneficial outcomes that stem out of an engaged customer. Now, this, this level is what we call, I already mentioned the meaningful and the characteristics we have, users love it and it brings meaning to their life. We have a lot of applications and websites like that that people tend to use every day. We have the Jumia website. Okay, people tend to order stuff from, from online and get it delivered to them. That's adding meaning to their life and they actually love using it. So that's that for the pyramid. And next, we're going to be looking at what we call UI design. We've talked about the UX, user experience. Now we're going to be talking about the UI, user interface. Okay, so now I, I saw this quote and I thought to share. How do I use this? These are the last five words that a UI design designer wants to hear. Because like I said, our, our, um, our goal, right, is to come up with an application or a digital product that is actually very easy to use. So if somebody is asking you how they, they should use this, that, that means it's not as intuitive or as easy as you wanted it to be. So these are the, like the last five words that a UI designer wants to hear. So when, when creating a, a website, an application, or any digital product, you want, to, you want it to be as easy and efficient to use as possible. Please mute your mics. Don't be too distracted that you don't know where your mics are unmuted. Thank you very much. So I was saying when creating a website, application, or any digital product, you want it to be as, be as easy and efficient to use as possible. That might actually mean making a login button obvious on a homepage of a membership website or adding a cart icon in a clear spot on an e-commerce website so that users can you know, go to the checkout page immediately. So these decisions are part of UI, which is user, X, um, sorry, user interface, user interface design. So in this class, we're going to cover everything that you need to know about UI user interface. Now UI stands for user interface, like I already said. UI design is the process of creating the look and the style of a product. I'm sure you already understand what's the difference between both of them. UX, focusing on the experience, the feel, okay, of a product. While the user experience, the UI, actually focuses on the look and the style of the product encompasses both the appearance and interactivity of an application. You know, the colors you see, the text you read, the buttons you click on, the animations you interact with, they're all part of an application's UI and thereby the, the responsibilities of a UI designer. UI plays an essential role in user experience. A user will not have a good experience if the design of the application is not intuitive or cohesive but you should know that UI is not the same as UX. So when comparing UX versus UI, you find that UX is more all-encompassing. It's a more all-encompassing term. It is a process of you know, researching, developing, testing, refining all aspects of a product to ensure that the user's needs and expectations are met. While UI, on the other hand, is more cosmetic, focusing only on the product presentation you know, the appearance of a product. That does not mean that the UI, the UI designer's job is easy, you know. They must decide what to put on the page and where to put it. For example, okay, before I go on, can, can I, everyone hear me? You could just raise your hand to signify that. Let me know I'm not talking to myself. Okay, okay, great. Thank you very much. So I was saying that the UI designer's job is not easy, you know. 
because it feels like the UX is the more complex part of it. It doesn't mean that the UI designer's job is easy. You know, we get to decide what to put in the page and where to put it. You know, for example, the logo might be placed at the top of the page or the bottom or both. The buttons might change colors when the user hovers over them or have animations or not. You know, the interactivity of elements, these are the things that we keep in mind. The UI designer must ensure that every visual element is attractive and not only attractive, but also engaging and aligns with the other elements on the page as well as the brand as a whole. So these are things that we need to take note of as UI designers. Now, these are a few examples of user interface. Just like UX, I pointed out that it's not only um, limited to, it's not only limited to, um, you know, digital space. Faith, Faith says, my slide is not moving. Please, what slides can you guys see? Twenty-eight. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So, just like I pointed out for the UX, it's not just limited to you know digital space. Also, things that we see around us. So, the examples of user interface here is what we have: key for opening a door. That's an interface. Okay. We also have the TV remotes. That's an interface too. We also have the bots in an application that we all know of. So these are all examples of user interface. Now, just like we treated good and bad UX, we're going to be looking at good versus bad UI. So these are a few examples. And just like before, I'm going to call people out or maybe just volunteers to raise their hands. And first of all, I'd like you to look at the diagram very carefully and tell us why the one on the left is wrong and the one on the right is correct. Raise your hands. And I have volunteers. Yet she at home. Please unmute your mic and go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. I I will not be as loud as I can. I just have to the computer. It's fine. We can, we, can, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. So for me, I think um, the one that is Matt Green, um, I will comment on that. First of all, aesthetically, it's pleasing because proper and white kinds of blend you get. And um, looking at that, there are some things that I can basically see, um, like at the top right corner where you have those two diagrams. It's visible, but for the other one that is marked bad, you can't really see them. And if you go down to the bottom of the um, design, there are also icons that are there that are visible. While for the one that is marked bad, it's not visible. And I think um, when design is concerned or when you're doing a design for somebody, it should be done in such a way that the person can easily identify um, the things that are on the app. That's for me. Beautiful. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, um, who else do we have here? Um, Baba Tunde, let me show my can go ahead, please. Are you speaking because we cannot hear you? Okay, um, in your bong, please go ahead. Um, good afternoon, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, go ahead. Okay, um, from my own point of view, for someone that has an eye issue, I would say the right one, why I would choose the right one, should, I should be the correct or appropriate one is because of its color code, it's more attractive, and I could see it clearly on the white, um, on the white and the purple background. Why the other one that has the ash and the black, the ash and white background is giving me a blurry um, sight. I can't really see what's going on. It's not colorful, it's not attractive. And 
like you said, we the customer's experience. If I should see this other one that is the bad one as the app, I will not want to stress myself. I want to go around the app. I'll be distracted because of remember I have an eye issue. But this other right one is more attractive and relaxing for me to concentrate. I want to see how to use the app. Thank you. Thank you very much, Inyobo. That's a beautiful answer. So I'm just going to, you know, the, the first one, just like um, the first speaker said, it doesn't look pleasing, okay? The color combinations has very low contrast because why would you place, um, you know, a purple icon on a gray background? It's making it very hard for the users to tell what icon that even is because of the color combinations, okay? The same thing with the bottom navigations. The, the icons are barely visible. And then we have the icons, we have the call logs. I can't even tell that that's a call log because of the color combinations too. So these are all the, the remember when we said that UI focuses on the looks. So this doesn't look appealing, but the one on the right does. So we need to take note of this. There's some colors that you cannot put together. There's some colors that do, did not go together at all. So you have to go for colors that have high contrast, you know, um, light versus dark colors, you know, placing dark colors on maybe light backgrounds so they actually pop out and you can see it better. So we need to take note of this as UI designers. We have another example here. We have somebody's hand up already. Read one. Do you have something to say? Okay, probably not. So you can see the difference between um both designs here, right? That's, okay, okay. Um, Hilfemons has something to say. Go ahead. Okay, for this one, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Um, I would say uh, we have what's it called alignment issues, because the on the left, the one we have on the left here, the um the header, the head header or heading is um centered to the middle, while the text itself is centered to the left. Okay feels like the person is not deciding where he or she wants to place the content while the one on the right everything is you know aligned beautifully so thank you very much you're famous that was a beautiful answer so like she said alignment issues okay you cannot have the header or your title aligned to the center and then the body text that follows it aligned to the left it's already looking disorganized and not so pleasing to the eyes. But look at the one on the right. Everything is aligned properly to the left. So these are things that you need to take note of too. Alignment. We're doing our designs because they're actually very, very important. I think we're going to treat this in the next class. We're going to be talking about the principles and elements of design. Things that you need to do, do's and don'ts when it comes to design. So next up, we're going to be looking at the importance of user interface. Why is user interface so important? Why are we even talking about it? UI design directly impacts user experience and satisfaction. A well-designed UI can enhance user engagement and encourage repeated usage. This is what keeps what brings people to an application. I mean, I've seen a lot of so this time, and um, we had this um this old U UBA application, a lot of people complained about it, people tweeted about it because it was so frustrating. And, and also the UI was so bad. They had a lot of faults on that application. So people kept complaining and it's not going to encourage, you know, usage of the application because of how it looks and how it also make people feel. But then when your UI looks good, and also you have a good experience on an application or website, people will keep coming back to use your application, okay? So that's the importance of user interface. Okay, so um, you should know that we have, we've come to the end of the class basically. We have um, 
weekly tasks, or should I call it daily tasks? Because at the end of every class, we're going to be giving out um, tasks, okay, for you to actually work on, which you're going to get um, this one before the end of today. So, and then we have resources here. This slide is going to be shared in the Discord channel. So everybody gets to have it. We have resources here that I put together. We have bad user experiences, apps, stroke websites. You should check that out. And then we have the laws of UX. You should actually read on that too. So we've come to the end of today's class. And this is time for questions. The floor is open. Ask questions. You can either use the chat box or you raise your hand so that we can call you to ask your questions. So go ahead. Please tell me you have questions. I mean, I've, I've been speaking for how many minutes? If you don't have questions, I'm going to have questions for you, definitely. Balogun, kindly, please um, unmute your mic, unmute your mic, brother, and ask your question. All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, good afternoon. Um, I have a question concerning um, color and um, typography. Is there a way that the two of them work together or you can just use any typography on any color? Okay, beautiful question. Just like I said, colors and um, you know, typography, they play actually a very vital role in UI UX design, actually. I already, I already spoke about colors. You know, colors they actually represent a lot of things. There's an application that you can use blue color for and to make a lot of sense. And there's an application that you cannot use blue color for. You know, let's say you design for a fashion brand. Also, you've noticed that um, Tinder or all these dating applications, they tend to use colors like pink, you know, and purple. You can also have fashion applications for women you know that pink is actually a kind of feminine color. We cannot use pink if you're designing an application that is meant for, um, you know, men, for, you know, the males to use only. So these um, colors play vital roles when you're designing and also typography. Now, there's this picture, I, I don't know, I wish I wish I could share it. Typography, like I said, plays a very important role. There are some um, websites or there are some, there's some designs. Let me, just, let me just keep it simple. There are some designs that you cannot use um, a serif font for. All of these things, we're going, to be talk, we're going to talk about them as we move further in this, in this training. There's some, there are some designs that you cannot use a serif font for, and there are some other designs that you cannot use a sans serif font for or a signature font, because there are a lot of different types of typography, right? So it needs to, these are things that we need to take note of. So to answer your question, they actually go hand in hand, okay? They represent stuff. So you need to ask yourself, what is the application I'm trying to design for? What is this thing that I'm trying to, what's um, the aim of this thing I'm trying to, is it, is it for a banking application? Is it a food or drink app? What is it exactly? And then you're able to decide what typography. Am I going to use a serious font? what type of typography or color to actually make use of. Do you understand? Yes, thank you very much. Rachel, please unmute your mic. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Please don't share me. Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay, earlier on in the class, you mentioned how um, UI UX is not just restricted to digital uh, products, and um, you give some examples. So now, like in a, let's say, in building a house, you know, in a construction um, phase, would you say like a UX, UI UX designer, are they, are they um, really put into play in other, you know, um, industries that are not digital? 
Okay, beautiful question. Very beautiful question. So, like I said, yes, UI UX design is not just limited to, you know, the digital space. They also play a, an important role in other industries, right? So, they tend to decide how how these things work, but they are designers for different things, right? UI UX designers, they focus on digital products. They're designers for all of that. So that's why we have architects, right? To, they, you talked about buildings. That's why we have architects to put these things in place, to decide where um, each room should be placed, right? So they're actually designers for different things. Do you understand? UI UX designers, we focus on building digital products. Did you get that? Can you hear me, Rachel? Yes, I do. Thank you. Yes, but but that also means that other designers need to think about you know the needs of users to be able to give them what they want. You can can go back to the example I made on the tab. Okay, if that whoever built that tab had put the users in mind or asked a few questions, I'm sure they would have they would have found a better way to design that in order for users to understand it. Do you understand? Right there. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. So, um, Rachel. In the chat said, so what if you are given a color to design with by a company and the combinations are bad? What will you do as a UI UX designer? Okay, um, I'm going to tell you from experience that I had a, a very stubborn client. Okay, it felt like we had different opinions because in my mind, I was like, how do I put this out there knowing that, okay, this is going to be on my portfolio. And people now start asking, did you design this? With this poor co color combination, so most of these um, clients they don't they don't they don't actually know these things. That's why they they come to you in the first place. That's why they're paying you to do the job. So you have to try to convince them. Okay, so this is actually this doesn't look visually appealing, and also do your research. Okay, survey send out survey questions. Let people other people use this um application okay or see the color combinations and then give you their feedbacks with that you're able to tell your your clients or the company hiring you you're able to convince the company that these colors will actually go together i hope i answered your question okay All right, all right, Rachel. Um, in your bong, please unmute your mic. Okay. Um, my question is: You said we have um a task to do after oh, this. Okay. So okay. I want I want to know how we're going to submit it. Etable. A submission link is going to be sent to you. You're submitting on okay. Etable. Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. All right. Ekanem. Um good evening. Hi. Okay, so my my question is um in tourism, in the tourism industry, you have um the expectation is the um visitors have um, some kind of experience and interface while they come into a place, a space, whatever you're you're selling. So sorry, um, sorry. can you can you take that again? Okay, so when you um in the tourism industry, so um a customer is coming into a place, say a hotel, a resort, for instance, 
So you have this, um, there's an expectation that you have an experience and also an interface with, with the place you're coming into. So in, in some cases, they have this digital um, roadmap to, to ease the experience of the um, customers, how you move around, how to locate places, and where to go to, where to get fun, where to get water and things like that. You have some of them digital, you have some of them um, maybe like a signage, a, a, a paper written or a sign post printed out. Are those things done by the UX and UI designers or um, that's my question. Okay. <laughs> So the host says he wants to answer this question. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Um, so let me let me come in here, right? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So one thing I want to say is this. Uh, this knowledge you've, you've gotten, right, is something that's applicable in almost every aspect of life, right? But uh, you also need to understand that um, there is a scope, there's a context to everything. Uh, it's just like the question the other lady asked. Um, you have architectural designers. You have you. There's all there's all also called computer aided design, right? But the 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 concept of design per se is that you have to. There is a UI aspect and there's a US aspect. So this is a bit more generic. Now, but when you're talking about tourism and all those stuff like that, right? Uh, first of all, as an architect or someone who is into CAD, if you're pr probably designing a a, a a a building plan and stuff like that you 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 will you don't have to be a ui ux designer right but you can understand the concept of what design you can understand the fact that look in as much as you can you know uh build your house build your hotel and whatever it's actually looking very nice you have um swimming pool and every other place every other thing in place right you also need to understand the experience behind it. How will your users feel when they get to use these things, right? So uh, don't try to, you guys shouldn't try to, okay, can I use, does it mean that a UI UX designer is one that does this one? No, no, no. Uh -uh. First of all, get the concept, understand the, uh, you know, what is actually being done because when you want to now start applying it into um, a house, a day's fast, I can give you a typical example now, right? Let's say a car, right? Um, by default, your car, the, uh, what's it called? The bonnet, right? Is in front, the boot is in the back. Now imagine actually changing that design and you want the bonnet to be at the back and then the boot is in front. You could actually do that if you want, but the question is, what will be the experience? So you wouldn't actually now tell me that uh, it's a UI UX designer, right? So just think of this as they just work on digital products. Now, concerning the resort and all those stuff like that, of course, even a graphics designer can do that. It's just a roadmap. You tell the person, okay, um, just give me, I need you to do some graphical representation from this place to this place, it puts arrow and all those stuff like that, right? So I need, I kind of need you guys to stay on course, right? So you don't go, uh, you don't, you're not everywhere because this is actually, what you've just learned is, is a concept you can actually apply everywhere. In fact, it's a concept you can even apply on your own body, right? When you actually wake up in the morning and you decide you're actually stepping out to, uh, let's say you want to go and withdraw money. See, there is a certain dress code. There's, so, there's how you should dress. There's how you would actually dress and the experience you get is different. But the UI to you is fine. So you decide you're going to the bank and all of a sudden you say, okay, fine. You just want to put on some bedroom slippers and then a short and a singlet. That's your UI. That's what you do. That's just your UI. But trust me, the experience you get is different. They will almost not let you into the bank. Almost not let you, right? So that's just the concept that you all need to actually what have in place, right? So thank you. Thank you very much. I hope your question has been answered. It has actually. Okay, um, Tebena, please unmute your mic. Okay, um, can you hear me? Good afternoon. Yes, can you try to be Hello? a little bit audible? Okay, good afternoon. Um, when you were saying that, uh, talking about UI, UX, I'm kind of confused. What's the difference between um, the UI, UX, and designer? 
um, the app developer. Since we deal with digital and as I believe um, the app, an app developer also do, do designing an app. Do we also design an app? Hello, did you get that? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. There's a lot of difference between, <laughs> if, I, if I go your question, you're asking what the difference between a UI UX designer and an application developer is, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, please. There's actually a lot of difference between both of them. Yeah. A developer, just like you said, developer actually focuses on the development of the application. While the UI, UI UX designers, they design the application. It's, it's as simple as that. The developers are the reasons why you see an application on Play Store. You can actually you know, download and install it. They make that happen. UI UX designers, you focus on just the design of the application. Do you understand? Okay, that means we work hand, hand in hand. With yes, yes, yes. The developers work hand in hand with the designers. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Chukudi. All right. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. All right. Like, I want to chip into to that guy's question. I want to ask my own. So, these um, UI and US design. What's actually the difference between the web designer and the UI US designer? I don't I don't know if they are if they they mid design. I don't know. Yes, actually. So I, I don't I don't I don't want you guys to think that a UI UX designer designs only an application because you will not be trying to put them apart. Whoever designs um a digital product could be an application. It could be a website. So. That also means that the person is a website designer, website designer, mobile application designer. They are all UI UX designers, okay? Because it is, the design is all product. So there's no difference between the both of them. Do you understand? Okay, so they can also be called web designers. Yes, they can also be called web and designers. And product designers, okay. Yes, and product designers. They just have a niche. Faith. Please go ahead. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my question is, um, will there be coding in this class or is there an aspect of UI UI designing that um, coding comes in? So that's just it. No, that's why I already answered, I already answered the other person. Design is what we do. There's nothing like coding or development aspect of this. We are UI UX designers, okay? But if you want to code, you can you can actually you can actually go and learn um, Android or web development or any of that. But there's no coding in UI UX design. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I think I already called in your bone. So could you please lower your hand so that I know that I already called. In your bone, did I already call you? Yes, you did. Sorry, I'm just okay. lower my hand now. Thank you. All right. Do we have any other questions before we call it a day? Any other questions? Okay. I've come to the end of this class. I mean, I had I had a good time. I, I like that we, we had an interactive session. So like I said, I'm going to drop the task. And CodeCamp 3.0 is not child's play, okay? I need to warn you, it's not child's play. You're going to see that evident in your, in your, your task, yes. So brace up, okay? Brace up. So we're going to see in the next class, but before we go, I'm going to call on the program manager in presence of um, IKs to, you know, give a closing remark. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Um, yes, I think that, that was a beautiful one. Thank you very much, Fivo. Uh, just, just to um, iterate a few things, right? Um, though I'm going to actually put 
everything I want to say in a video, right? Um, but I just want to encourage you guys uh, to keep at it. Please uh, pay attention to your track channel, which is the UIUX channel. There are three channels that should be of major concerns to you. The announcements channel, the UIUX channel, and the beginner level channel. These three are important. If for some reason you're on this call and you are not seeing any of these channels, please uh, hit my DM immediately. Right. If you're on this call, you should have the beginner role. Right. The beginner role actually gives you the purple color and you know gives you that purple color. Right. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it's purple. Right. Um, and then of course you should be able to also see the UIUX channel. And then of course, announcements is something you should pay attention to. Right. It's very important. Now there are a few things I'll just put together in a video and make available for you all so you can actually just get right onto it so that the I don't want this meeting to go longer than it should, right? But uh, I think that's basically uh, that, right? So if somebody is saying if, if the task will be paired, it will not be paired. Paired task has ended. From now on, OYO, you are on your own, right? You're on your own. And please, please, please do not make sure you stick to deadlines. If the deadline for a task is Friday, 11 p.m., trust me, anything more than that, you won't be able to submit. I only allow this for great tasks, right? But I'm not allowing it anymore, 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 right? And trust me, nobody, nobody can talk me out of it. So please don't think you can talk to your trainer or your mentor to talk to me. No, no, they don't have that power over me as far as task is concerned. They give it to you. I give the deadline and I close it and it is closed. So please, please, please make sure. And for some of you who come online and the next time we see you is, you know, in three millennium or three millennia, um okay you probably you just go to a new a different dimension you know a different multiverse and then you come back and you expect that code camp 3.0 has you no know, weight for you please it doesn't work that way you need to try to be online turn on your notification if you don't know how to go to google how to set my notification on discord that's why you have google that's why you have chat gpt these are tools they are platforms to help you to get answers right you're in tech so be techy so thank you very much, guys, and uh, see you on Wednesday. Sorry, what's your handle on Discord? Admin, uh, just admin. That's my handle on Discord, admin. All right, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Do have a wonderful day, guys.